Hey everyone, Zach from performanceplusprogramming.com. And today we are talking about shoulder health for the fitness athlete. That is somebody doing CrossFit style workouts that has them doing muscle ups and kipping pull ups and toes to bars and ring dips and push ups and all of those movements that make up the great sport of CrossFit and similar recreational fitness activities. We're breaking this down because the shoulder is one of the most commonly injured areas for the fitness athlete. And we wanna understand both how to keep our shoulders healthy, and I'm gonna talk about that from a physical therapy perspective, as well as performing optimally, where we're gonna be joined by Pamela Gagnon that's gonna talk about how these same factors not only cause pain, but rob you of performance. So let's get after it. So, and when we break out shoulder health. We're going to first talk about our, our vertical movements, both vertical pushing and vertical pulling movements, and what we want to see from a mobility perspective and the big hitters from a technique perspective that if you have these technique issues, we very commonly see that associated with shoulder injuries. And then we're going to translate or transition to our horizontal movements, our dips, our bench press, our push-ups, those sorts of things. So let's start with our vertical pushing and pulling movements and with mobility for those two. Because like I said earlier, the CrossFit athlete has to take their shoulder through more range of motion than we typically see in so many other sports. If you're a bodybuilder, you're typically doing like arch back pull-ups where you don't take the shoulder through full range of motion, or you're doing lat pull-downs where you're seated and you're pulling a cable at this slight angle. So the shoulder tends to not see that full 180 degrees if you're in more of that bodybuilding space. And so we do see a lot of people with stiff shoulders impacting their positioning and leading to the shoulder having more stress put on it. So we're going to start there. So here's our favorite test for shoulder mobility. So Pamela is going to sit with her back against the upright of this rig. So let's go on the inside of this. All right, right here. So she's going to get her entire spine flat up against that. If you have a little bit of natural arch in your back and your back doesn't get completely flat, that's fine. What we want to do is use that as a marker for us not getting any compensation in the spine to reach for shoulder mobility that we don't have. So back's flat, her legs are crossed, and we're gonna start with her palms down. This is test one, and this is the slightly easier test. We also wanna control for how wide her grip is, because if we go wider, it becomes a little easier to open our shoulders up. We're gonna go shoulder width. So when I'm looking at her from above, those arms are gonna be parallel to each other. Her elbows are gonna stay locked, back flat, and we're gonna see, can she open her arms up enough that that PVC pipe makes contact with the upright? If so, we pass test number one, and we want to go on to test number two. Test number two is really tough. So she's going to keep the exact same grip width, and she's going to flip her hands upside down. That external rotation of the shoulder with her hips flexed really challenges lat flexibility, and we want to do the exact same test. Can she keep those elbows locked out and open up? Lat flexibility is so important for the CrossFit athlete when the lats are stiff, when shoulder flexion is at all limited, we tend to see people get into really awkward positions with their kipping movements as well as their overhead squat performance. From there, that's looking at just, can we open the shoulders up? But we have to also appreciate that the upper back is really important. If we have a stiff upper back that can't extend and get upright, it's going to naturally bring us into not having a full good overhead shoulder positioning when we talk about our barbell lifts, our kipping lifts, our handstand work. So we're gonna test thoracic spine mobility. And we like to do this with this lumbar locked thoracic rotation test. This foot? So she's gonna go down in all fours. Okay. Oh, right. <laughs> then Pamela's gonna sit her butt back on her heels. So all the way back, her forearms are gonna go together right in front of her knees. <laughs> I forgot this one. <laughs> and then elbows go down on the ground. <laughs> this is gonna be a little tough for you to see in this live version, but inside the Facebook group, I will put a link up to our mobility checklist that will take you through more tests than just these to help you really pinpoint some stuff. But this is a good quick screen. We're up against a box or a wall here because as she does this rotation that we're about to do, if we don't block this side bending, she'll get a false negative. It will let her body move through more motion than it actually really can in terms of pure rotation. And we want to test rotation both ways because if rotation is blocked, then extension will be blocked in the upper back. So butts down on her heels, forearms are together right in front of her knees. She's going to take her left hand and put it behind her low back. She's going to then turn her head to the left and twist and rotate her spine up as far as she can go. And what I'm imagining is if I'm looking at her from the camera, I'm imagining her collarbone being the line that I'm angling here. And I want to see that that collarbone can go from being parallel to the ground 
up to about a 50 degree angle. Pamela's made it well past that because Pamela is a freak when it comes to how much mobility she has and she makes us all look bad. Don't compare yourself to that. Just see if you get around 50 degrees of motion and test that out on both sides. If that is limited, then you definitely wanna jump into thoracic mobility overhaul. That will pay off huge dividends in all of your movements from your squat technique to your overhead pressing, to your gymnastic skills, to relieving neck, low back, and shoulder pain. So make sure your upper back moves really well. That's where we're starting from a mobility perspective is those two big hitters. Now let's dive specifically into a couple of the movements and some of the technical things that are so important. And we're gonna kick that off by looking in general at kipping mechanics and the things that we see that protect the shoulder and the things that we see that make the shoulder a little bit vulnerable. All right. So basically as we move through the kip, right, we want to be able to have some rotation in the shoulder, some flexibility, mobility. So as I move through the kip, I'll have Zach kind of talk about what the shoulder's really doing as I move through it. All right. All right, so from a shoulder perspective, what I want you to just notice is that that shoulder is opening and closing, and she's really in control of this motion with her shoulder and her course. I like to cue people to imagine taking that pull-up bar and throwing it to the ground in front of you and then throwing it to the wall behind you to really have them emphasize that motion coming from and being controlled by the shoulder. Then you're also gonna see that she goes from a hollow position to an arch position. And it's key that this is core and shoulder focused, not hip focused, which is the big issue that we see individuals do. And let's talk about the initial um, positioning of this, of getting ready to swing. So if we see an athlete with like a lazy hang and we're swinging very low, we're not activating the right muscles. And as we come down into a kipping pull up, we might jar or a butterfly pull up and obviously with you, you'll be able to know, but just by watching an athlete, why they might be having pain because they're not staying in that active hang position at the bottom. So to, to test the active hang, you're really looking at somebody from the front and we just wanna see that there is space between their ear and their deltoid. When that space is closed down, they tend to be hanging out on more passive structures in the shoulder. When they open that space up, we get all the muscles around the shoulder and the shoulder blade to activate to protect the shoulder from just hanging out again on passive structure. So we want to be active. We want it to be core and shoulder generated. Do you want to demonstrate some of the mobility, like um, the issues that are caused by lack of mobility in the kip that you yes. see? So there are two big things that I tend to see when somebody lacks shoulder flexion mobility in the kip. The first one is as they go from the hollow to the arch position, I can't demonstrate this because oh, I'm actually fairly mobile in the shoulders, but it's pretty obvious when you see this one. You'll see somebody open their shoulder up and they just run into a brick wall. And you're like, why do you not have more of an arch position than that? And why does it so quickly and abruptly stop? That's a good demonstration. You'll see that it gets slow at the end. When so somebody's okay. actually really stiff, it will be even more aggressively stopped at end range there. And that's just robbing them of getting to this position where they're fully opened up and they can snap back more aggressively. So those stiff shoulder people are not only every rep just jamming their shoulder into in range, but they're also missing out on that recoil effect that we get. The second thing that we see is some people recognize that when they hit that stiff wall, they're missing out on more motion to help recoil them. And so they'll try to make up for that by bending their elbow and dumping their shoulder forward. When we bend the elbow, we take it out of a little shoulder flexion. And when we dump the shoulder forward, we internally rotate the shoulder. So you'll see that elbow bend as well as that big elbow rotation happening as Pamela That's opens painful. and closes. It does not feel very good. That's the shoulder does not like to go through a lot of rotation as we're dynamically moving back and forth. What happens when you bend the elbow and internally rotate, you put slack on the lats. So remember we tested that earlier, legs cross, palms up. If you failed that test, we're very likely to see that bent elbow position as you go into the arch position of your kip. And I very frequently see this in my physical therapy clinic showing up as anterior shoulder pain anytime people do high volumes of kipping based movements. I think the final thing to discuss from this is, is this go back to the kip being core and shoulder generated, not hip generated. So we'll see a lot of people that instead of going into a hollow and arch position, will you show us hollow and arch again, Pamela? 
Notice how ribs open and close, ribs and pelvis. What we'll see some people do is pike instead. So now you're seeing her hip flex a lot. And what you'll notice is that her entire body is actually going to start to kind of pendulum back and forth underneath the rig. That's going to create and generate a lot of force being thrown up on the shoulder that becomes much more difficult for the shoulder to control that motion. And again, you'll see people that get, have a hip generated kip show up with a little bit of shoulder pain. I actually want to show you um, a, a test to, for coaches or athletes to see are they hanging or are they um, generating their power through active shoulders or are they generating it through like more of the hip pendulum. So I'm going to start a, a swing test. and yeah, and you just clap. Tell me when to stop on a dime. So when I clap my hands, Pamela is going to stop. All right, now do it. So I have a much harder time, and that wasn't even a big pendulum swing, much harder time because I'm not controlling the swing through muscles, I'm just using momentum. And when we are generating um, power through skills like pull-ups and toes bar and bar muscle-ups, we want to be able to have full control for good shoulder health. Absolutely. All right, so that is the kip. Let's transition that now to the overhead squat and positions that we want to see in the overhead squat of the snatch. Because I tend to see most shoulder injuries get aggravated with vertical pushing and pulling exercises, which we just covered, and then secondarily to wide position barbell overhead movement being the overhead squat and the snatch. So first, let's start with grip width. I know this is going to be pretty basic, but I want to make sure that everybody's in the right position from a grip width perspective. And when we're talking about transitioning to the snatch, we want to have a wide enough grip that that bar is going to not hit our pubic bone because that is really painful on the pubic <laughs> bone. We want it to hit really low on the abs. So the test that we do is we flex our hips up and grab the PVC pipe with straight arms. And that for most people is going to be wide enough that they could do a full pass through so that if they had to bail on the overhead squat or snatch, they are not so narrow that they can't complete a full pass through. And now we just threw a lot of weight overhead and something's got to give if that bar is coming behind us. And it's probably not going to be the barbell snapping in half. It's probably going to be your shoulder getting stretched into positions that it really doesn't want to be in. So wide grip that has that bar touching above your pubic bone and lets you do a full pass through. If you're stiff, you might go a hair wider. If you're super, super mobile, you'll see some athletes from an overhead squat perspective, being a little bit more narrow ties the shoulder up a little bit more and will give them a little bit more passive stability. But in general, we're going to start here because we overhead squat to get us prepped for loading the snatch more. So I prefer that my athletes overhead squat with the same grip width that they would snatch with. The next big thing we want to set in place here after we talk about our grip width is we want to look at shoulder rotation when we're overhead. And this is a really controversial topic. You'll hear a lot of opinions on this. If you go to the CrossFit level one course, they'll have you turn your palm out and hold a PVC pipe with your shoulder externally rotated. And you'll in general hear most United States based Olympic weightlifting coaches discuss in the overhead squat and snatch, trying to externally rotate the shoulder. And then you'll hear arguments against like the Chinese weightlifting coaches who often talk about internally rotating the shoulder. And there's a huge debate over which one is right and which one is wrong. The funny thing is, is that everybody's doing it the exact same way. So Greg Everett of Catalyst Athletics wrote a fantastic post where you can see side by side pictures of people overhead squatting and snatching Olympic weightlifters from all over the world. When you're holding a stiff barbell overhead, you cannot maximally externally rotate your arm and you also can't maximally internally rotate it as you're holding that with a strong grip. So what ends up happening is that people end up hanging out somewhere in the middle ground of their shoulder rotation as they overhead squat. And the key is that the amount of rotation that they start with is what they end with. Similar to the kipping pull up where Pamela was showing that bent arm, like dumping the shoulder forward. When somebody overhead squats, I don't want to see their shoulder dump forward. I want to see that the angle that they're at when they start is the same angle they're at when they're in the bottom. And whether we cue external rotation or internal rotation, really all we're cueing is applying pressure to the bar to stabilize the amount of rotation that they start with. I so. love what you just said about like the start position should be the position where you go down the entire way. So as um, watching yourself, if you video or as coaching, that's a great way to understand if that athlete's continuing good shoulder mobility positioning. Yeah. This goes back to the lats again. 
So when we overhead squat, arms overhead, hips are flexing, which challenges our lat flexibility the most. So a lot of times when we see that rotation changing, a lot of times it's lat flexibility. Sometimes it's people just needing to be cued to do a better job of, of stabilizing the bar a little bit. So that's shoulder rotation. The next thing that you'll actually see a lot of people argue about is where the shoulder blades are going and what we should cue athletes to do with the shoulder blade during any overhead pressing movements. You'll hear a lot of people discuss trying to pull the, the corners of the shoulder blade, the top inward corners together. You'll hear other people talk about pulling the shoulder blades down and back. I never cue anybody to do anything at all with their shoulder blades. I certainly don't cue them to pull their shoulder blades down towards their back pocket, which somehow is still a cue that is very commonly given. But when you look at somebody, if you have a friend take their shirt off and you have them raise their arm overhead, what you'll notice is as they go overhead, your shoulder blades, your scapula actually upwardly rotate. That's a naturally occurring thing that helps clear space for you to get all the way overhead. If you pull your shoulder blade down and back and you try to lift overhead, your motion will be dramatically limited. So we don't want to do that. That's the opposite of what we want to do. But I don't think we need to cue this with anybody. The cue that I give is get that bar overhead. Pamela, imagine there is a giant pile of bricks on top of this bar. Don't let it come crashing down on your head. So she's not shrugging her shoulders up to where she closes down this space, but she's also not letting the bar push her all the way down. She's kind of in the middle there. She's meeting it with active resistance. She's keeping the shoulder in an active shoulder position, just like we talked about in the kipping breakout as well. So that is shoulder rotation, grip width, and active shoulder. The final thing that I think is really important to note with the overhead squat is the angle of the torso when we overhead squat. So the more forward lean the torso is in the overhead squat, the more extreme of a shoulder position we have to go into. The more upright the torso is, the more stacked we can keep that barbell. And we want it to be more stacked. More stacked means we're able to rely more on bony anatomy and we have better joint stability overall. So what we like to look at with individuals is some people that have really stiff ankles won't be able to drive their knees forward and they'll have to sit really far back in their squat, torso forward, that puts a lot more stress on their shoulders. Sometimes it's people that have overemphasized the cue of sit back, which used to be like the, the huge, most common cue given in the squat. And we would see individuals always squat by basically doing a hinge first and then squatting down, which obviously if we overemphasize the hinge, we immediately drop our torso forward and we can't stabilize a load near as well. <coughs> Finally, we will see some people with really long legs get into a weird situation where that does force them to lean forward, further forward. If you fall in that camp, Go to my YouTube and search for long leg squat solutions on the Barbell Physio YouTube channel. And I've got some great tips for you there that's a little bit outside of our scope of what we want to cover today. So that's the overhead squat or snatch and our basic vertical pushing and pulling breakouts there. Anything else on that? Yeah, no, just with handstands, the same cue. It's kind of like don't let gravity win. So again, you're just actively pressing down through the ground as opposed to actively pressing the PVC or barbell as well. So I think that's a good translation um, into the gymnastics handstand skills as well. Great. So let's move to our more horizontal pushing movements. So we're not going overhead. Now we're talking about the push up, the bench press and dips and what we want to see from a shoulder mobility perspective there and technique perspective. Let's start with the push up. The mobility test that we're going to do for all of these is going to be the same. Number one, we talked in our last breakout on upper back mobility. That will apply here as well, but we're not taking the shoulder into flexion with these movements. We're now taking the shoulder into extension. So we want to make sure that we have an adequate amount of shoulder extension. So the test that I like to do, Pamela is going to be perpendicular to the camera here. So arms are going to be straight out in front of her. Second. Yep. She's going to make a fist. So we're going to basically imagine that she's holding a dumbbell or she's holding rings that she's doing ring push-ups on. She's going to pull her shoulder blades back towards each other and then bring her arms back. And what I want to see is can she get to this point here where her elbow gets to her stomach or past? If so, she has enough shoulder extension to go through those movement patterns without having to compensate with her shoulder blade. So we'll see in all of these movements, a lot of individuals that are stiff in a shoulder extension, they'll dump their shoulder forward, similar to what we talked about in the overhead squat, the kipping pull up, that dumped shoulder position tends to put a lot of stress in the anterior shoulder. So do that test really quickly to assess if you have the extension that you need to for those movements. And then we can go into actual 
technique components there. Technique components of the push-up. Yeah. Anything you want to mention there? Um, we're just learning how to, I think, not just load our shoulders all the time and add um, other muscles to engage to protect the shoulders. Yeah. So, yeah. So the big thing I like to look at from a push-up perspective is somebody's arm angle relative to their body. You tend to see people that are a little weaker in their triceps and a little stronger in their pecs go really wide with their elbows. You'll see the same in like the bench press where people go wide bench press and that hits their pecs a little bit more. The issue with that is that if you are much stronger through the shoulders and pecs and weaker in the triceps and you always do that, we do tend to see that be correlated with a little bit of shoulder pain. So if you always find yourself kind of in a T position in your push-ups, you might want to do some extra tricep-based strength work or look into a program like gymnastics-based pressing that will translate to all your gymnastic skills, but it's really going to build up the backside of the arms that are so important for the CrossFit athlete. If we go super narrow with our elbows, like a close grip push-up, that's a great way to train the triceps, but it does put a little bit less of the emphasis on the pecs and the shoulders. So what tends to be the best position for most people is in the middle. So with their arms at about a 45-ish degree angle, if I'm looking at Pamela from the top and her body was a straight line and her arms were another set of lines, Pamela's positioned like an arrow rather than like a T or an I. That tends to be the best position for people there. Beyond that, the push-up not in incredibly technical in nature. We'll add a few things to it when we talk about the bench press and we talk about the dip, especially the dip. The bench press is gonna be pretty similar there. Same mobility requirements, same discussions when we talk about elbow angle, where we change a little bit of where the load goes based on that. But one really important thing with the bench press is, we really want to emphasize the shoulder blades getting pulled down and back. So the exact opposite of what I talked about earlier with the overhead press, we are stronger and more stable when we lock shoulder blades into position. So the cue I tell people to do is they get set up on the bench, they're holding the bar, they haven't unracked it. I want them to pull their shoulder blades down and back, open their chest up, and think of trying to put pressure through their upper back the entire time they're doing the bench press. That will create a stronger position for them to do horizontal pressing off of when it comes to the bench press. Nice. Now. We'll move to the dip. The dip. The dip has a few more things from a technical component that are important to look at. All right, so just um, for sake of Zach being able to hold the position, I'm gonna have his feet just kind of up on here on the bench. So let's look at a nice dip that's tall. The rings are gonna stay by his side and he's gonna come back up. All right, come down. So for the best shoulder health, that is a great dip position. One, you're distributing your weight like we talked about through the skeletal system. Two, you're keeping the um, mass of your, you know, the, the mass of your weight underneath your body, just like we talked about in the overhead position. If we get too far behind us, Zach's gonna show us if the rings are too far behind us, all of his body weight is being supported right here. Go ahead and come down. That is no good. So that is very painful for the shoulder, even just with the box, that's painful. So what we'll tend to see is athletes, as they move, come down, they push the rings behind them. So go ahead and do that. That's what I'm going to look for. Where are the rings in relation to the line of their hips and shoulders? We pretty much want that straight line between the hip and the shoulder. So let's talk about the chest now. So, um, there's two reasons we don't want to really dump the chest. One, we want to catch in a much taller position for the ring muscle up. So if Zach were to dump the chest, you'll see his hips aren't moving as far down and his chest is way in front, which makes it much harder to dip up and that puts again a lot of strain on your shoulder. If his hip is staying more static and he's just kind of folding a little bit, that's also not building good strength to pull your whole body up and then transition into the dip. So we want to be the athlete to be able to move the whole body up and down during the dip position to build the right strength in the shoulders and also better positioning. Anything you want to add? Yeah, I see people that do that, that especially from like the bodybuilding world, they want to do that forward dip position because they're really strong in their pecs and a little bit weaker in their triceps and that leverages pec strength a little bit more. 
but when we transition that to the muscle up, we don't want them catching like this. They're gonna have a tendency to over rotate and have a hard time slowing themselves down to then go into the press versus if they practice their dip where they're catching upright, they'll tend to in that transition period also catch more upright in a better position to perform the, uh, the dip portion of the muscle up. And just to add one more thing, the most common question I get is how low should I go in the dip? And extreme range of motion is amazing. You should go as low as your body can support that weight safely because we do want to work a full range of motion. That's how you get better. That's why we squat more through depth and that's how you get stronger. But again, when we catch in the ring muscle up, it's more efficient to catch tall. Yep. And if you have that strength of that extreme range of motion, you'll have that strength to really hold that taller position. Thanks so much for checking out our shoulder health workshop. Let's look at some programs that will help you with your shoulder health. All right, so we talked about a couple of different things from a mobility perspective. If you struggled with that overhead mobility program or test, you wanna check out our overhead mobility overhaul. If you struggled with that upper back thoracic rotation test, then thoracic mobility overhaul. Then from a general strength perspective, Bulletproof Shoulders is one of our most popular programs to build strength and stability in the shoulders so that they're just overall healthier and ready for harder, higher level movements in the CrossFit space. Then of course, we've got over 30 different programs, gymnastics and strength-based to help you reach your specific goals. Everything from pressing mechanics, gymnastics-based, if you struggle with your foundational strength for things like push-ups and dips, all the way up to things like our bar muscle-up overhaul, bar muscle-up endurance program. So we have stuff to cover you no matter where you are right there.